Hello, I am bus driver from Arctic. Now it's midnight. I just finished my job, my shift. I am going home to watch Trucker Josh videos. Today I have a day trip down to Minnesota. I gotta pick up some trusses or something in Winnipeg. I think it's gonna be on one of those roller trailers where it rolls off, so that's, okay. that's gonna be fun. It's just a day trip, I'll be back tonight. It's about a five hour drive down there, five hour drive back, plus the loading, tying down, unloading. It'll be a full day, but I'll be back tonight. I'll have to show you the load a little later. I quickly tied it down, tagged it, and flagged it. I'm 12 feet wide. Got a load of trusses behind me going down to Park Rapids, Minnesota. And uh, I just want to point out, I got a compliment on my truck today. Well, I think it was a compliment. <laughs> my shipper came out to bring me my paperwork when I was done tying it down, right? And he came up to my window and he went, ow, and he was squinting. He says, your chrome is blinding me. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm gonna quickly grab fuel. And since it's not very busy at the fuel islands here, oh, one guy just showed up as I said that, of course. There's a, uh, I'll cook and show you the load and I'll fuel up. So, that's my load. See, this is the side that traffic's gonna meet at because I will be going on two lane highways for a lot of my trip when I get to the US. Uh, not, it's just sticking out a little bit at the end here, but it's mostly flat along here, right? So the passing cars don't have to worry about that. That's the stuff up there that I had to get readjusted. They had that down here which makes sense when you're looking at it, right? But when I'm trying to tie it down, I can't get my straps anywhere near it. So we had to throw them up there and all good. And the other side you'll see is where it's wide. See that? I don't think I'm 12 feet wide. That doesn't look 12 feet. But yeah, that's, that's what they told me it would be. It just sticks over this a little bit there. And I got flags on the pieces here that are sticking out. And this mostly just rides down the shoulder of the highway. Got a couple more trucks pulling into the fuel islands here. That other guy just pulled straight through. So I'm gonna start fueling here so I don't hold things up. There we go. All right, let's uh, input all of our info into our app here. My odometer reading in there sure it's correct fuel I put in it ended up being 291.052 liters 291.052 liters I paid two dollars and 17.9 cents equal six hundred and thirty four dollars and twenty cents so I actually did pretty good on this uh, last fuel up I got 36.29 liters per hundred kilometers 6.48 so 6.5 miles per gallon and that's that number that i've been trying to hit so we did good on this last tank of fuel made it into the u.s we're going to cross back over the red river here which comes down well it goes up into canada from here i guess we could say it flows north back up over the red river you can watch all the water flowing back toward manitoba or up towards Manitoba. Look how much smaller it is here, eh? Once it gets to Winnipeg, the Assiniboine River meets it, and then up north of Winnipeg. Thanks, Karen. We're in Minnesota, everybody. Karen wants to tell you it was so important she had to interrupt me. We're in Minnesota now. Uh, yeah, the river north of Winnipeg is just massive, and it's up to 100 feet deep. Just tons of water heading up north. It, it drains into Lake Winnipeg. 
And then from there, on the other side of the lake, the lake drains down a bunch of rivers down to the Hudson's Bay up north. I think I've told you this many times, but for the new people, our whole civilization around Winnipeg is based around the Red River. That's, that's the main artery. It used to be the main mode of transportation in this area too. You take the river. Now we got roads and big trucks. Much better, much better. Made it. Could barely fit in here. Look at this view. That's Leech Lake. And uh, they're building something right here. And I'm delivering the trusses for it. No one's here. It's just me. So I've got to back my trailer around there and dump them about 10 feet back from this pad on the other side back there all well hopefully not getting stuck really hope i'm not gonna get stuck oh is this pretty packed down here you know it's pretty good i mean i got full locking diffs so if i have to no i'm not gonna get stuck here i'll be fine and good thing they gave me that shorter trailer because uh sitting down here jaws Barely fit down the driveway. I'm gonna back in from there. There's that inside here. I'm not sure if you realized it or not, but that was a blind side back. Good thing I have those sleeper windows. Another reason I wanted to have the sleeper windows is it makes blind side backing a little easier. And it's a huge open space. I mean, I couldn't miss it. Come on, it's not that hard. So about 10 feet from here, he said. I'd say I'm about, well, I'm over 10 feet. I wanna give them plenty enough space. And when I tip the trailer back, this is all gonna come sliding back, right? 
so I don't want it to be too close I can straighten it out a little bit yet but if I dump it from here I'll go right to there so I think I could go a little bit further back yet not too much though a little further back and we'll dump it 20 feet further back here before I take any more straps off though <laughs> Got to slide these axles forward so the trailer can tip. So you can see already the trailer wants to tip backwards and I haven't even started tilting it yet. So let's take the rest of these straps off and we'll slowly lift it up and then we'll release the rollers and it'll go <laughs> so it's a not a not a, an exact science but these things are designed to come off the trailer like that and there's no damage sitting right where it should be 10 feet from the concrete there everything is nice and safely out of the way I put this little piece over here pretty cool eh? another day in the life somebody's building a nice cabin on a nice lakefront property now we gotta get out of here. This is the driveway I came down. Uh, uh, you gotta build it somehow, eh? You gotta get the product here. I should have called ahead to the Minnesota National Guard and told them to call off their air force of mosquitoes around this area that it's just me. They don't have to attack me. They just like, foreigner! And they came and they just attacked. I'm a friend, okay? Friendly. Friendly. The mosquitoes here. How could you even enjoy these cottages on the lake? You just get eaten alive. Man, you come here for the weekend, you just lose all your blood. It just, they just suck it all out. <laughs> There's crazy amounts of mosquitoes here. Oh boy. It's like Manitoba all over again. Okay, let's slowly get out of here. Let's see if we can. I'm kind of really glad I got a flat top or a low low rise roof. <coughs> Excuse me. And short stacks for uh, for this delivery. I'm going to bring my trailer as close as I can to that tree there without hitting it. They made this just big enough for me to get in here with this trailer. There we go, see? Beautiful. Beautiful. Now we gotta go underneath these low hanging trees. Um, it would be a lot harder with, uh, well now that I don't have a wide load behind me, I can go around this before I had to go right under it. Hello. Ah, I missed it. Oh, that's a yellow light. That means a red light's coming. See, I know the future. Don't mean to brag or anything, but I saw that one coming. So this is, uh, what town is this? Bagley? That sign there says Bagley Dental. Bagley. I don't know what town I'm in, but they got traffic lights. Very nice. We're in Minnesota still. I don't know if you can see on my map there, we're just above, uh, 
what is that? White Earth Indian Reservation? It's just over there. I can't tell what town this is. But it's, it doesn't matter. Whatever. We're going this way. Got an empty trailer behind me. I'm going to be home at like 2 in the morning. So excited about that fact. And my sleeve on my shifter is doing the little uh, thing again. That's okay. I know what it is now, so I'm not stressed out about it. I don't care. I got to fix it. It's like a $10 part, and then I just got to remove the airline, slip it over, blah, 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 blah. What did you do, man? Dad, what did you do? What did you do to Obi? <laughs> Whoops. There was an incident on Friday. Don't worry, it's not that kind of incident. It's, it's actually a good thing. Let me explain to you why. Uh, I guess I backed up against a little bit of a dirt hill and it, my, my mud flap it, it caught under the tire like this, except on the other side. It caught the tire here, and the tire kept rolling backwards, and it sucked it down like that to the point where it, it, it broke it right off. I just took the bracket off here now. Uh, and broke it right off. A little spoiler alert for tomorrow. May as well tell you now and get it out of the way, right? It happens, so I have it in here. So I was thinking of maybe just reusing it, but the spring broke and it's bent and I'm not putting a bent mud flap bracket on my truck. Old Blue deserves better than that. So we're gonna turn this happenstance, this, this, this whoops it into a, into a good thing. Let me show you how. Got a set of these with clear LEDs. So they're not actually the red ones, they're clear LEDs because I'm changing over all the lights to clear uh, dual revolution LEDs anyways. They're gonna be, uh, well, those are gonna be red. All the red ones are gonna glow red and the amber ones will be my signals, they'll be amber. But the lens themselves will be clear, right? When the lights are off and they're gonna match these. And I can switch those lights out. Those aren't dual revolutions in there yet, but uh, I will flip them out eventually. All these are being replaced along with the uh, side markers with the same kind of lights. The cool thing about this is they're gonna, you know, function normally on the highway. Red facing back, amber on the sides. It's gonna look normal. But when I go onto the parking lot and I park, or at a truck show, and I park, I flip a little switch in the cab, and boop, all the lights turn blue. It's gonna be great. I can't use it on the highway. Don't worry. <laughs> I have a feeling that uh, there might be some other blue flashing lights following me then, wondering what I'm doing, confusing people. 
right? Uh, blue is the color of law enforcement in the United States. In Canada, it's red and blue. Well, I guess it's sort of red and blue in, in the US too, but it's mostly blue. So you can't have blue lights on your truck going down the highway. It confuses people. It makes, makes them think you're, you're a cop or something in a truck which is pretty cool. I love cops, so I mean, I don't mind, but I'm pretty sure the cops would prefer I don't do that. They might think it's cool. They'd probably think it's cool, but the going down the highway with blue lights would confuse people. So those are just for off-road when I park at a truck show or in the truck parking lot, just to, you know, puff up my feathers a little bit when I park, flip them all on and they'll, the whole truck will glow blue. But on the highway, they'll function normally, don't worry. I'm excited about that, so that's why I got these now. And uh, <clears throat> I figure we made a made a whoops, a whoopsie. It's minor detail, right? Minor. I figure why not, if we're gonna fix it, let's fix it and make it better. So I'm gonna try, I already got these bolts out of there. I got my impact wrench. I've got a few tools from dad's shop here. This is my impact, this is his socket because I can't find my sockets. Ever since I got this shop and I moved my stuff in here, I can't find my impact sockets. In sockets, but uh, I need tools. I need tools. I want to be able to do uh, as much work as possible myself to this thing. Everything that I can do myself, I want to do myself. It saves a lot of money. The shop that I go to with this thing is 130 bucks an hour labor. I can save 130 bucks. I do it myself right here. Huh. I got my own shop. But I'm gonna save this for another vlog on the weekend. Uh, so thanks for watching today. It was a fun day down in Minnesota. Uh, eventful. At first I was kind of uh, upset that that ripped off. It's, it's happened to me before, it's not the first time. It's, I should know better, but uh, when you're backing up against dirt and you think your mud flap might catch underneath there, it's always a good idea to grab a bungee, go back here. Uh, let me show you real quick while I'm ending this. Go back here, take a bungee and just like lift this up like this and just put the bungee all the way around just to keep that up and then it won't above then once you're done doing whatever you're doing in the soft dirt or snow you can put that back down I didn't do that oops but we turned it into something good that'll be for another vlog thanks for watching today everybody I appreciate it uh, don't forget to subscribe all the things every youtuber always tells you to do same thing here hit the like button and uh, tell your friends share it you know the drill see you tomorrow